And so, uh, so I've got about 3,000 pieces that go into the seating. So about every six months, I spend about a month on the top of a 12-foot ladder um, oh, taking these down and putting up the other ones. Oh, my and, gosh. And, and for me, it is uh, hot, sweaty, dangerous, and just delightful. This ain't your ordinary museum. This is the Montana Beer Museum, and we were honored to meet with Steve Bubbs Lozar for our podcast, as well as an in-depth tour. He's brilliant, so we'll just let him show you around. Give me a microphone. This is Bubbs, and he's going to tell us where his uh, Slovenia, what, your Slovenian family yes. gave you a brewing name? Yes. Okay, tell us. Well, actually, it's not just a brewing name. It's, it's a tra tradition in Slovenia, which is in Central Europe, is that... Um, you named your oldest son after uh, the patron saint of your village. And uh, my, my family came from uh, Chernomla and Nova Mesto. And, uh, and the, uh, at, at Great Grandpa's village, the, uh, the Catholic church was St. Stephen's. And so, uh, so he named his son Stephen Yosef, and he named his son Stephen Aloysius, and he named his son Stephen Wynn. And at one time, we all lived here in Montana, in this same town. Um, so uh, my wife and I had six kids, four, uh, uh, four boys and, uh, and two girls. And we didn't name any of them Stephen for a first name because <laughs> it became so confusing anytime right. mail came or anything like that. But oddly enough, in, in typical Slovene uh, fashion, we all had nicknames since just about since birth. So. Stephen, uh, Stephen Joseph was uh, Chico, and uh, Stephen Aloysius, my dad, was uh, Buddy, and uh, Stephen Wynn, me, is Bubs, and so we, we've all gone by those, those other names, but um, uh, the only time that wouldn't be the case is if, um, if I got a bill that I had a hard time paying for, I would always try to pawn it off on dad or... Or, or my grandpa, hey, no, I'm sure this is yours. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, so course. we we didn't we didn't curse our kids with that same, with that <laughs> with that, that same tradition. Um, though kid number six did get Stephen for a middle name, so yeah. Cool. So, Bubs, we're here at um, your beer museum. Can we would love a tour of it? Would you give like us a tour of this museum? Because uh, so, this I'd be place honored. is phenomenal. Well, thank you. <laughs> It's, it's actually a lifetime, I'm 72, and I've been picking up Montana Brewery stuff for my whole life. Um, and I was fascinated as a little kid by the artwork, but in my family, everyone drank beer. And um, so I was around it a lot. Um, and uh, you, got a, you got a pint of beer at, at uh, supper time, regardless of how old you were. And, um, and so, uh, so we, we grew up in, in that kind of a culture and uh, between East Helena and Butte and, um, and then out here in the northwest part of the state, um, it, it was great. So none of us were crazy about uh, getting in cars after we drank beer or anything. We just didn't do it. Um, beer was there for, uh, for the family getting together for, uh, for supper. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we kids all had a pint of beer, and even when we were toddlers, but we couldn't talk at the at the dinner table when when uh, when great grandpa and, and grandpa and all the uncles were around. We sat there, drank our beer, ate our food, and and uh, just listened. And boy, I am so thankful for that kind of training. It was great. I have a tremendous interest in brewing history, obviously, in art, and um, and in Montana. And they all kind of coalesced uh, there as a little kid in, in Butte, especially. So a lot of that interest came from your uncles and your, and your other relatives and stuff the, that, the, that the, were in the stories they told around the table? It, it really did. The biggest part of my interest came in these, um, these beautiful pieces of art that advertised all this. Uh, all these it's called Bruriana now. Mm -hmm. but, but you can see this is, this is from the 1800s and up to 1912. And uh, you can see how beautiful this is. This is a calendar from uh, from Great Falls. It's amazing. Yeah, it it really is. Um, so that's why I surrounded myself with it, and it makes me happy. And now I have the opportunity to share it with people. Is there 
a favorite part in here that draws you every time you walk into the museum? Is there a favorite piece in here? Often I'll just come in and some of the stuff I've had for my whole life. And, um, and yet I'll come in and sometimes I'll just sit on the floor or sit up here at the bar and just stare at this stuff. And it, oh, yeah. it, it continues to inspire me. So, um, so in a little while, I'll show you my three favorite pieces. And, um, and uh, oddly enough, they're little small bits of Montana Brewery advertising. But, um, um, but, but they're to me the apex of all of, the, all of that, what you see in here. So let me give you a tour. Perfect. All right. Gotta bring the beer. Gotta bring the beer. <laughs> I kind of like to start over here with my tour because um, because this uh, this this building uh, this room is set up exactly like my great grandfather's saloon in East Helena. He was an associate of Nick Kessler in the Kessler Brewery in the 1880s. Okay. And uh, this is his saloon right here, the last saloon he owned. He owned four of them, and uh, and so when you came through the door, this the place was set right across the street from the smelter, where lots of Slovenians and uh, Slovaks and uh, and Polish people came to came to work when they immigrated, and uh, and my great grandfather was no no different. And uh, so you can see the, the old saloon right there. And uh, this, this window right here is that upper right window. And all the stone that you see in here is, is from the, the old saloon. It's three stories. All this stone right here? Yep. And uh, it was uh, when Grandpa built the, built the bar in 1888, um, all of that rock was quarried in Nevada City. And, uh, and, and drug on stone boats, uh, pulled behind pulled behind horses, oh all the way gosh. to East Helena, and that's where they put it together now. And in uh, 2003, my family uh, uh, had a structural engineer look at the building, and um, and the report was it was a, it was a sound on three sides, um, and uh, and one side had a little bit of water damage, but it was a sound as the day Grandpa built it. Wow. Yeah, and so it was, a, it was a pretty stout old building, but but, but wonderful. But the, the men would come off uh, come off um, from the uh, from the smelter. They would come through this door. It has it has uh, uh, square nails that great grandpa drove into his threshold because all the men that worked in the smelter had hobnail boots, and he didn't want them tearing up his tearing up his <laughs> uh, um, his threshold. And this was the back back here. And what was real interesting, you know, first picture you saw, there's my, my grandfather, Stephen Yosef, and, um, and his five sisters out in front of the saloon. It was tore down in 2003, sadly. But right here sat a, uh, sat a, a wall and a curtain. And, and right here hung the, uh, uh, a ribbon that was attached to a bell. And the working girls that were that were upstairs, the uh, this was made for the aldermen and the mayor, and uh, when they would come in, they would ring for service, and the girls upstairs would go down into the basement, and when you see that that building um, in the basement of it, the right side were stone alcoves, where they would stack the barrels of beer, and um, and then inside those barrels in the bung they'd put a a, a copper tube. And it would go up through the floor in the bar over there. That's the original bar. Had a long trough in it, metal trough, with mm -hmm, with coils of uh, uh, coils of copper. And they would pack it behind the building. There were uh, there was an ice house, and they would pack it every three days with ice around the the coils. So when he came in and asked for a cold Kessler, <laughs> they would they would hand pump it from the basement oh my gosh. up and through the coils. And it came out, and it was, it was nice and cool. So almost like a like the English Cascales, except e that they exactly. put ice on it. <laughs> exactly, very very similar. Yeah, and and then on the right side, excuse me, the left side, um, there were three little cribs for the politicians, and um, and 
they were just tiny, just big enough for a bed to fit in, and um, and a wash basin. I've got the old wash basins. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and and, uh, and um, but after this uh, this story we just heard about the, the family in the um, in the brothel, mm -hmm. these these little aunties that were in their 80s and 90s when uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s when I knew them, they told me all these different stories, many more than I just uh, I just elaborated on, but. When they got done, they they said, "Of course, never while we own the building." You know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, yes. Confessions could be heard on Fridays. You're always <laughs> you're always a okay, but um, but this is uh, Grandpa's letterhead from 1909, and it shows the building and, and the horses out in front, and he lost the saloon in uh, in 1909 in a card game, oh my and uh, and very Montana. But uh, yeah. the guy, the guy he lost it to, didn't pay the taxes. So two years later, Lewis and Clark County came to Grandpa, and said, "If you'll pay the back taxes, we'll give you your saloon back," which <laughs> which they did. Yeah, he paid twenty six dollars, and uh, got his saloon back. Operated wow. it up, operated up to two thousand uh, to nineteen seventeen, and um, and uh, with with um, prohibition, just just bearing down on them, he, um, he went underground to start mining again. Mm -hmm. And uh, by um, 1922, he had died of Miner's Con in Butte, mm -hmm. um, down in the Pittsmont mine, choked to death on silicosis, which so many miners did. But in the meantime, my, great, my grandfather, that I'm named after, he was the first Lozar to serve in the US military. And he'd come back from... Uh, from Europe and, um, and took over the took over the saloon, but again, prohibition closed it down. So um, this picture is near and dear to me because I said we grew up in a in a beer culture. This is 1951 in front of the Virginia City Gilbert Brewing. The guy on the left is my dad, and he's holding one of my sisters. The little guy with the Aloha shirt is me, <laughs> so it must have been an Aloha Friday. And that's my Slovenian <laughs> grandmother, this little lady right here. My my grandfather, first first born in America. My native uh, grandmother, uh, Mary uh, Mary Morjo, and uh, and you can hardly see my uncle from Slovenia, Anton Leskovar. Mm -hmm. He's holding a beer on the side back, of the yeah. <laughs> back of the picture. <laughs> so this is kind of a this is kind of a family place right here. Oh, yeah. and, and we're all we're all very proud of it. That's pretty uh -huh. amazing, though, too. They have that much Montana history just in your family. You know, and it's yeah. it's um, it's a real um, uh, blue collar history, and, and I'm very I'm very proud of that. Um, the Slovenian uh, Slovenian uh, grandfather <laughs> married uh, a, a native grandmother, my native grandmother. And uh, two very, very different but similar cultures moved together, and we were we kids were the lucky ones to be able to grow up like that. A lot of people, a lot of people know about uh, Miller High Life, but High Life was really a very early Montana brand. Here's a here's a High Life exactly the same label as Miller used. Miller brewed something called Miller Select, but. Um, but this High Life uh, is exactly the same as Miller's, but we have a state capitol building, and Miller has the uh, the girl on the moon. Oh, wow. Exactly the same. A lot of people will look and uh, and they'll say, "Oh, this uh, this looks like a this looks like a what? What do you think?" <laughs> that looks quite a bit like a Budweiser. It certainly it? does. But uh, upon closer closer looking, you'll see it's a Braumeister. It's a Braumeister from Haver Brewing and Malting Company. And uh, lots of Germans uh, were along the High Line growing wheat and barley. And, um, and that's who they were selling their beer to up in Haver. And so part of the label is in German for the, for the local farmers to be able to read it. And isn't that a great piece, though? That is a great piece. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, we have, I, have an on, I have an ongoing... Um, argument with a with a fellow in Germany. Now this is a Red Lodge uh, Glacier beer from turn of the century, and the fellow in Germany uh, we write letters to each other, 
someday I want to meet him because he's just so cantankerous. Um, <laughs> and uh, yet it's fun. We've developed kind of a long distance friendship. And uh, But he claims it's the water was uh, originally the slogan of the Olympia Brewing Company. Well, it was not. It was originally the Red Lodge Brewing Company. And if you've been to Red Lodge, you know that the water is not particularly well known with all the, especially turn of the <laughs> century, with all the uh, the coal mining that was going on there. Um, but um, but this is a fun piece, and I like that. I mentioned Olympia. Lots of people don't realize that Olympia was initially a Montana brand, and uh, and the brewery was owned. Two breweries were owned by by um, a guy named Leopold Schmidt, who uh, who came from he came from. Uh, uh, from Germany, and he had uh, he had been a, a brewer in the mining camps, uh, which is a huge part of our Montana history. And eventually, he ended up in Butte, was the primary owner of the uh, Northwest's biggest brewery, uh, the Centennial, huge place. And he also owned another brewery called the Olympia. He was one of our he was one of our state reps. And when we were going to build our our uh, Capitol building, um, he and three others went around the west to look at other capital buildings. He got to Tumwater, Washington. Oh my God, that's the best brewing water anywhere. And I've been brewing <laughs> with Butte water. So, uh, so he went back and uh, sold his two breweries in, uh, in, in Butte and went out and started the Capital Brewing Company. But everybody out there said, we want that, that beer that's brewed at Olympia. Well, perfect for him because he owned the old Olympia Brewery right. Company. So he just changed the name. So all Montana people were the ones that started up that original Olympia right there. Another piece of great history for Montana is, is right here. Just finding uh, uh, materials was, was a real challenge back in the 1800s. And so you'll see this is embossed. It says Miller, Milwaukee. Yeah. This was a, a Miller beer, and, um, but they used it because they wanted anything to get their hands on. So they out just in needed, Montana, the bottle? needed the bottles, <laughs> and so they they picked up whatever they could. But what's unique about them is, and I love this, is the um, the corporate logo. Mm -hmm. Usually they'll have a, they'll have a combination of the uh, the initials of the brewery in those corporate logos. But this one you'll see it says two things. It says home industry equal to any. So turn of the century they were telling people buy local. By right. local support us here in our community, but everybody knows. Well, somebody knows that the uh, uh, Lewistown is the geographic center of the state, okay. and, and the dead g center of the state, and and so their logo has a map on it, mm -hmm. with the with Lewistown, the little black dot in the middle, right. and all these red lines going in there are railroad lines that went into be able to ship things from Lewistown. The geographic center of Montana. Okay. So Can that you way. See those red lines again now. That's crazy. Yeah. So they, <laughs> and I, I just think, what a great way to promote your, your growing, your growing state, oh your growing gosh, economy. Yeah. You know? And now craft brewers are like, totally embracing that, like think oh. local oh. mantra again. You know, they've gone back to that. Absolutely. And and this is again one of my most favorites. Mm -hmm. This is a silver spray oh, from gosh. Phillipsburg. And um, what's, besides a beautiful label, mm -hmm. what's unique about this is that in 1910, silver spray was, um, was brewed with radium. And it was billed as atomic beer in little, oh, tiny, little <laughs> tiny Phillipsburg. Yeah. I've, I've got all the ads. I've got thousands of ads over here. Um, but the one that talks about radium just is a scream. But that's what they were. That's what so they were. So today's Phillipsburg Brewing Company is a pretty popular craft brewer. Okay. Uh, but did uh, they pick great. up? Did they buy the old name and? Oh yeah, I'm sure, that, yeah, yeah think, I'm sure they did. Yeah, I'm sure they did. Yeah. Because I assume they, it's not the same brewery over time. Well, well, yes and no. Yes Again, and no. Yeah, because the the malt house is still up on the hill at the end of Main Street. Mm -hmm. and, where the springs uh, is, right? Where the springs the, are, and um, springs. and so they're still using that uh, the malt house. And uh, they added onto the brewery, so that's where the brewing is is being done today, and right. uh, and it's wonderful beer. 
Oh, it's they're fantastic. We just made it up there for the first time. Oh, to good the brewery for you. And, and yeah. they did have some photos in there up at the Springs of mm -hmm. the old brewery on that location when it was called Kroger Brewing. Yep. yep. Which was pretty interesting to hear. Well, because uh, now we think of Kroger in the grocery industry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Kroger was an important guy in town there, and uh, as were most brewers. Mm -hmm. um, but he, um, but he had uh, the family lived right up by the brewery up at the end of Main Street, and uh, he planted planted trees alongside of his house right. for every uh, every one of his kids, and those trees are still there. They're big, full, mature. I think one or two of them are missing, but. Uh, but the, primarily the trees are still there. I just so think that's such that's a That's actually thing. a really cool story because while we were there, they had a spruce tip ale on yeah, tap. Yeah, yeah. And they said it was made from the spruce trees that the brewer had planted there. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's the same trees you're same referring trees. to. Yeah. Which is really cool to have that history oh. in a modern beer today from 100 plus years ago. And I don't know if it's just me. I don't think so. But when you walk in that place, you can just you can just feel the history. You can... You can, you can you can see Charles Kroger, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, I think so, uh, yeah. And his little kids running around, and, and how wonderful is that? Well, and Phillipsburg Brewing now has done a good job of capturing history, and, and they have the two locations in town, and yep. like bo yep. both locations have a lot of elements of history in there. They do. With the, the original in-town location being in the old bank building there. Yep. Very yep. cool. I know that I can't drive into Phillipsburg with my car automatically, turning up Main Street there. <laughs> and it's, and it's, a, it's always a good turn. Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, that's one of my favorites, the Radium Beer. Nice to have And that was just part one. Make sure you subscribe and click the little bell so you don't miss out on the rest of the tour. To hear more of Bubs' personal story, head on over to our podcast, the Craft Beer, Travel, and Adventure Podcast. You can find it on our site at livingastylelife.com or anywhere you listen to podcasts.